Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects scripting tutorial. I'm going to show you how to make a script that will flip any mask you give it, uh, given that it has vertices and it's either a mask or a shape layer. And we'll be making two functions, one of them to flip things vertically and the other one to flip them horizontally. So we're essentially going to be creating a horizontal flip function, looking at the math of how this works, which we can look at on a whiteboard. And then we'll also be looking at the vertical shape flip, which is very similar, uh, it just has a couple of tweaks. And then essentially we'll be taking any layer you want, such as this shape layer here, and all you have to do is make sure you have a path inside of it or if you have a mask make sure you refer to the mask path for the shape and then we can easily flip it on the horizontal or vertical axis so without further ado let's go ahead and create a new JavaScript extended file and we'll start off by creating a function called vertical shape flip and for this we're gonna need two arguments we're gonna need the short sort of path property right here so that we know which uh, property to adjust and then we're also going to want the sort of path value, which is the uh, uh, the shape. You don't have to uh, bring in the shape specifically, but it's easier just to have those two separate variables. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say property, and we could even call this the path property, and then we need the shape as well. And then um, when we run this, I'm gonna call vertical shape flip, and we're going to need a path property, which is actually fairly long. We need to go all the way down into this shape layer path here. So what that looks like is our app.project, the active item with the composition, um, layer one, the property called contents. Then we need to go into the first shape here where our uh, shape is located. And then we actually need to type in property contents again, because not only is there this contents that contains all of our shape information, each shape themselves has its own sort of hidden contents uh, property. So we're going to go into there, contents, and then inside the contents property, we can get the path, which is all of these vertices we created right here. So I'll say dot property path one, and then the name of the actual path inside of path one is just path. So that's quite a bit of code, but essentially that's going to get us the path here. You could also do it where you have it selected already and you check if the name is path one or path and that could work as well. But in my case, I just want to hard code it so you know how to access that. And then the other thing we need is the shape. So actually, since the shape is just the uh, dot value of all of this, what I'm going to do is take this entire thing and create a variable called the shape property. And we'll set that equal to that big long list. And then inside of here, we can just say shape property, shape property dot value, which will give us the path as well as the shape of that path as well. So if I go ahead and alert our shape property dot name, and then alert our shape property dot value, we should get path one or path and then all of those vertices. So if I go ahead and run this, you'll see I'll get path, which is our selected property here, and then we'll get our shape. Uh, which if we get the vertices of, we'll get a full list of all the vertexes inside of our shape, which is perfect. Now what we're going to do is basically take all of these vert vertices and we're going to apply some algorithms to flip them in either way. But essentially what we're going to need to do is calculate the min and max x and y position of this shape so we can get the width of it and the height. And then we need to find the midpoint of where we're going to sort of cut it. Uh, whether we're doing a vertical or a horizontal flip, we need to know the sort of fold point of where things need to be flipped. And then based on that, we can apply some basic algorithms that I worked out to uh, flip the shape. And then you can go on to do anything else you'd like with the algorithm. So the first thing I'm going to do inside of our function here is go ahead and create a variable for all of those vertices we just saw. So say vertices is equal to our shape dot vertices. And then we also need to get all those min and maxes. We need the minimum x, the maximum x, the minimum y, and the maximum y so that we can subtract them and use them to figure out where we need to flip things. So what I'm going to do is say mins and maxes. We're going to set this equal to a custom function called get mins and maxes, and we're going to give it our vertices. Now inside of our mins and maxes function, which we'll define down here, we're going to again have our vertices. So what we're going to do is loop through all of these vertices, and we're going to create a couple variables, min x, max x, min y, and max y. And what I'm going to do is simply set these equal to the initial vertex. So I'm going to take my vertices, 
uh, the first one and the x. Same for the max x, I'm going to make it the very first x value. And then for the y, I'm going to make it the very first y value. So each of these uh, vertices is basically an x and a y. So I'm going to grab the first one in the entire list and then the x. And then for the y, I'm going to grab the first vertice in the entire list and then um, grab the y. All right, and now we just need to loop through all of our vertices. And each time through, we're going to check whether or not the min is less than our current min or the max is greater than our max. So I'm going to say var i is equal to zero for i is less than our vertices dot length increment i by one. And then we're going to check the current vertice. So I'm going to say vertices i. And we're going to start off by checking the x. We're going to check if the min x or max x needs to be changed. So I'm going to say if the vertices, the current x vertice we're looking at is less than our min x, then that's going to be our new min x. So I'll say min x is equal to this. So if the current vertice we're looking at is less than whatever our current min is, then make that the new minimum. And then same for the maximum, copy and paste this. If the vertices are greater than our max x, then that needs to be our, become our new max. So I'll say max x is equal to that vertices. And then we're going to do the same thing, copy and paste both of those, but for the y. So I'm going to say if our vertices i, the current y one, is less than our min y, then that's going to be our new min y. And if our current vertices uh, y value is greater than our max y, then that needs to become our new max y. And that needs to be the y. And then after all this, what I'm going to do is return an array of all of these, just all four. I'm going to say min x, min, I'm going to say min x, max x, min y, max y. And what I'm also going to do is alert all of these just so I can... Uh, see what they are before we return them. So now if I run it, I'll get our list here. We have our min x, negative 196, our max x, 404, min y, negative 413, and our max y, 286. So that's good, we're getting those values correctly. Now we can use those to sort of start working on the math to flip these things. So we have all of these stored in our min and maxes array here. We have four values, and what I'm gonna do is just re-spread them out here. So I'm going to copy and paste these variables, and instead of saying vertices, I'm going to say vertice, uh, min and max is 0, min and max is 1, min and max is 2, and min and max is 3. All right, now let's calculate the width and height. So I'm going to grab a variable called w for width, and we're going to set this equal to our max x minus our min x. And then the same thing for height, we'll say h is our max y minus our min y. So that will take the furthest x or y and subtract it from the closest um, and give us the whole length of it. And then, like I said, we need to calculate sort of the fold of where the shape is going to flip. Um, so what we're going to do to calculate that is just create a variable called fold. And the way we're going to get that is by simply saying, um, depending on which flip you're working on, but for the vertical flip, we want to say the width divided by 2 and then plus our min on that axis, which would be our x. So if we're flipping vertically, we're going to be looking at the uh, horizontal axis, and we're essentially going to take the width divided by 2. This is going to be basically our folding point, but we also need to add our min x in case if there's some padding or things like that. And then when we make this fold uh, for the horizontal shape flip, the only difference is we're going to be using uh, the height as well as the uh, y value instead of the x. All right, and lastly, we're going to basically go through and create a little function or a loop to process this uh, shape we're bringing in, or all these vertices we're bringing in, and use these values to convert it. So we're going to create a couple of variables. The first one I'm going to call translated shape. And this is going to be like the new shape we create that adjusts all the values and then we reapply uh, to the, whatever property we give it. So translated shape, we're going to create a new shape. And then we're also going to create a couple of variables to hold all of the uh, new data we're going to be dealing with. So because we might have a shape with uh, Bezier curves, we're also going to need to make sure we track the uh, tangents. So I'm going to create a variable to track the vertices, the intangents, and the outtangents. So I'll say new vertices is equal to an empty array. And then I'm going to have new intangents 
and new out tangents. And if you're not aware, the tangents are the sort of curve uh, adjustment lines that are coming in, and the values of those will increase sort of the uh, intensity of their stretch. And then I'm going to create a new x and new y variable where we can uh, essentially apply those values through. All right, so once again, we're going to loop through all of our vertices. So we'll create a loop of our i is less than our vertices.length, increment i by 1. Now we need to briefly discuss um, a few things that are different between the vertical and horizontal flip process. As you can see by this uh, drawing I've done, if we look at the horizontal flip, uh, the green dots are representative of an original shape, and these red dots are representative of our flipped shape, which I did by hand to sort of back engineer, reverse engineer how this process could work. So the main thing you'll notice is that all of the x positions of these vertices remain the same after translation or after flipping. The only thing that changes are the y values. And the opposite is true with the vertical flip. And since we're working on the vertical flip right now, we need to understand which, if the x or y is going to need, need to be calculated, and which is not going to be calculated. Well, in our case, the y value is not going to change when we're flipping uh, vertically. The y values will always stay the, on the correct uh, position, we just need to make sure we calculate the x instead. So the reason I bring this up is because the first thing we're going to do is uh, set our new y equal to our vertices i and then the y value. And the reason we're doing that is because it needs to be the original value. This is setting the y, our, what is going to be our translated new y uh, vertice in, as their original. Hopefully that makes sense, but essentially for the a vertical flip, we're going to need to keep the y values the same for each of our vertices, and then for the horizontal flip, the x value is going to remain the same for all of our vertices. And that's all we need to do to deal with our y. Now we need to do the processing to calculate what our uh, new x is going to be in this case. Now there are three cases um, for which we can come across. The the x value can be less than the fold, it can be greater than the fold, or it can be equal to the fold. If it's equal to the fold, the value will remain the same. Because if we have a fold line and we need to flip it along the fold line, that vertice, it, it's not going to go anywhere. It is sort of the center on the axis. But if it's greater than or less than the fold, we can do some things about that. So I'm going to create an if statement. And I'm first going to say if our current vertice is less than the fold. So I'm going to say if vertices i, and we're going to be checking the x vertex in this case, is less than our fold. And then we're also going to need else if. Else if vertices i is greater than the fold. And then yet another else. And this last else means that the vertice is equal to the fold value. So if that's the case, our new x is going to be equal to the current x vertice. For the other two, the algorithm we're going to use to calculate our new x is going to be taking our fold, and then we're going to add the absolute value of our fold again, minus our current x vertex. So essentially what this is going to do is set the new x equal to our fold, plus the absolute value of the distance from our vertex to the fold. So if this is our fold and this is our vertex, essentially what we're going to do is take it and flip it over to the other side. This is what this will do. And in the other case, what we're going to do is just copy and paste it. Instead of adding the distance from the vertex to the fold, we're going to subtract it. And then after we've gone through all three of these checks, we need to populate our new vertices, our new intangents, and our new outtangents. And we're going to do that with our new x and our new y. Remember, our, our y is going to remain the same in each case of our vertical flip, but the x is going to be calculated based on its position relative to the fold. So what I'm going to do is say new vertices dot push. And of course, this is still within our for loop, but I'm going to push an array called new x, new y. And then below that, we need to get our tangents. So our new intangents is going to be pushing in, and we're going to need to push another array. I'm going to grab our shape.intangents i, 0 for the x value, and then shape.intangents i, y value. And then I'll go ahead and duplicate this and change it to out tangents. 
and change these values to out as well. Now, another thing to take note of is not only did we uh, remark that each time we calculate our new flipped vertex, we need to sort of uh, change the x only and not the y value. The same goes for the intangents. If we want to flip the intangents, which we need to do if there's a Bezier curve, otherwise a curve that's like this, if we flip it, it's not gonna be the opposite. It's still gonna be like this. So we need to invert the tangent. The way we do that is we multiply the x tangent by negative one. So I'm gonna take the intangents uh, x here on each of the tangents and multiply it by negative one, which should flip it for vertical. When we get to horizontal, we're going to make the adjustment on the y rather than the x, just like we would for our vertices. All right, now we basically have our translated shape, believe it or not. We have the shape already calculated that is flipped vertically. Let's just go ahead and alert these values, our new vertices, our new intangents, and our new out tangents to make sure we're getting valid values before we adjust them. So if I run it, we're going to get our new vertices, our new intangents, and our new out tangents. These numbers may not mean much if you're working with a strange shape or a large shape out of your comfort zone, but essentially this should be working already. We just need to apply these new values. So we're gonna again be using this translated shape object I created. I'm gonna say translated shape dot vertices is equal to our new vertices. And then the same thing, we're gonna apply our new intangents and our new out tangents to our translated shapes currently empty in tangents and out tangents. And lastly, we also want to grab our translated shape and say closed is equal to true. That way we have a fully closed shape and no errors. And then the last thing we can do is the reason why we brought in the path property here so we can apply our new shape to it. So I'm going to grab our path property and set the value to be our translated shape. So now if we go ahead and save it, and every time we run it, we're gonna see we get a nice vertical flip. And that's pretty sweet, it's already working. There's actually very few things that we need to do to make this work for the horizontal flip. So let's go ahead and do that very quickly. I'm going to copy and paste the vertical flip code, and we're gonna change a few things. I'm gonna change the name to horizontal shape flip, and then let's go ahead and go down here and see what we need to fix. Like I said, the fold needs to now refer to the height rather than the width, as well as the uh, Y value instead of the X for the fold. And then when it comes down to our loop here, remember that the X value is going to mostly remain the same. So we need to change the, um, the vertices here as well as the new X. And then instead of checking each X uh, vertex, we're gonna be checking each Y. So I'm gonna go ahead and change these all to Ys. And then we need to say this is the new Y and the new Y and the new Y is equal to that. And then for the intangents to invert them properly, we need to multiply the Y value by negative one rather than the X. And I believe that should be it. Let's go ahead and change the name of our vertical shape flip call here to horizontal shape flip and try it out. And as you can see, now we're getting a horizontal flip instead of vertical. Um, as you can see, there's a bit of a difference, but uh, it is working as it should. If we just try to look at the difference here, you can see there's our vertical flip and here's our horizontal flip. So basically both of these vertical shape and horizontal functions are virtually the same with slight differences in when you're adjusting the values for the X or Y. But that's gonna do it for this week's video guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to hit the thumbs up button as well as subscribe down below and hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. If you guys wanna check out the code for this, you can look at the GitHub link in the description where it's all located. And down there you can also follow me on Instagram to be notified immediately when new videos are uploaded and also ask any questions you may have. But thanks again for watching guys. We'll see you in the next one.